Commentary done by Diggity Upper left hand corner. We have Mong starting as the brown Terran, bottom left hand corner. We got Rush starting as the purple Terran. This is uh, going to be on Vermeer, potential ASL preview. Mong really noted for his TVTs, extremely strong TVT, but he's going up against Rush, who I'm going to say is one of. So you got Royal, you got JYJ, and I would say Rush is number three right now as far as top Terran. Light, maybe Light. Light number three, Rush number four, maybe contention right there, but Rush. Really, really good player. Um, this is kind of a classic replay match as well. They had kind of the rivalry develop because you had the, I believe they had the, uh, the um, what's it called? Revenge battle between the two of them. Rush, oftentimes the more aggressive player. Mung just has a very, very strong blanketing, sharp movement style. He plays old school TVT as well where he just kind of goes for small positional advantages and then lofts it into long-term macro advantages and then just smothers you that way and just cuts off every little route and if you try to make a move punishes you for it but i don't know what it is about monk he just seems to have this ability to gain early game edge advantages regardless of what the build order start is and i don't know how he does that precisely Part of it is is its build order selection, but the the secondary part is just his build order execution is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Rush is very good at being aggressive, but I feel like Mung just plays defense. It, it almost feels like the sharpest spear versus the the. Uh, is there some mythical Aegis the shield? I'm trying to think of a mythical shield out there that's well known. There's not a lot of well known shields. It shows you where our priorities are. But anyway. Sharpest Spear versus the strongest shield, I'll say it that way. Maybe the Hyelian shield, Zelda style. You do see a gas take right there following up with the barracks. The barracks, I think, is a little bit more favorable for Rush, should it lift off to find his opponent. Looks like Mung is going to end up with first scout, though, as the SCV making its way bottom left. Rush keeping an SCV in base a little bit longer, so might end up with a slight resource advantage. It looks like he wants to go for Rax into expansion, which will give him the overall economic lead. Mung scouting it. And ooh, SCV hiding itself. Let's see if the SCV makes its way. Yeah, should make its way back out and is able to confirm it. That was a nice, cute little maneuver to try to prevent it. Gonna damage that SCV at the very least before the Marines on the field to get what he can. It looks like Rush guessing well and heading. Maybe he just saw the entry path of that SCV coming from the north, and so knowing that he needed to go to the north as well. We are seeing a factory start now from Mung. He's keeping a single SCV in gas though. So it doesn't look like it's going to be a heavy dedication. And on top of that, Rush able to get that SCV into his opponent's base. Not following up with any additional... Okay, there's the additional Marine construction. Is about, I was about to say, I'm a little bit shocked to see that he wasn't building additional Marines on defense. And maybe he's going to try to skip to a later factory. SCV sliding back through the lines. and see what he can do. Factory is just about up. And is he going to get it out? No, not quite. Explodes on the ramp. But Mung now going to go ahead and set up and drop his base. He's going to have the machine shop dropping. So should have a tech advantage, but at cross positions, this is certainly going to be a lead to rush overall. Interesting placement. So the bunker very far forward and the barracks actually landing a bit to the rear, maybe to try to blockade this. Successfully doing so. Two Marines now in that bunker overall. SCVs are now going to be producing at double time. For Rush, giving him the early game advantage. And we'll see how Mung decides to follow it up. It looks like he is building an initial siege tank. I think what he wants to try to do, and we'll see if he does execute this, is get the siege tank pressure up. He, he's got the earlier siege tank. So go for the earlier siege tanks. And then once he feels safe and secure, try to rely on that siege tank advantage to go ahead and push out. And especially on Vermeer more than other maps because of these spokes, maybe make a push towards the slower spoke to apply some of that positional pressure to his opponent. We'll have to see overall though. Factory dropped, add-on is dropping as well. Barracks also floating halfway, or critically the barracks remaining at home base for Rush. Also keep in mind there's that difference of the bunker and two Marines. So that's another 200 minerals that have been dropped versus just the, or actually 150 minerals in uh, Rush's favor that has spent very quick armory to maybe go for a very anti-vulture composition of siege tank goliath right off the bat and get a quick plus one first siege tank out on the front the 
We are seeing Siege Tech being upgraded opposite side. The Siege Tank with two Marines out... Sorry, actually... Two Mar <laughs> That's an interesting timing right there. Both the barracks getting attacked simultaneously. But the Siege Tank ranging the Marines right this second, forcing two SCVs to repair. Mung trying to float over that barracks to make it so the SCVs couldn't target select, but instead opting to go ahead and sneak in and peek. He's going to see that machine shop whirling and a siege tank out, so should know that siege check is on the way. Is he going for siege check opposite side? Also going siege check on his end, but it looks like the siege check is going to be a little bit earlier. So he, he's got the superior siege tank count and is actually getting a lot of value by attacking this bunker and forcing that siege tank uh, on the front back. So it took a little bit of damage here and there. And I'll be curious, and it, ooh, is able to get some additional shots. Siege tank now finishing, so we're gonna have one tank that is sieged. But if Mung actually just peeks right back out, so he took a single shot right there, which is not the best. But now he's got three, this is what I was talking about with Mung. So <laughs> look at this, Wraith follow-up from Rush. Did I even miss that? Just have that natural expansion. Really cute play here. So gonna be able to get the barracks, which will at least drop some vision. We do have two Marines here. But keep in mind we have that Armory and Goliath now producing as well, and the Charm Booster upgrade. <clears throat> and a single Goliath making its way. So Mung, as soon as the Goliaths are able to join this attack, might be able to turn right back around and pin, and even though Rush got that earlier lead, and even though he has more SCVs right now, might end up locked into two bases. So right there, the Wraith not picking on those siege tanks on the front, gonna try to make their way all the way to the natural expansion, and Goliaths are right there waiting for them, which is really going to negate their ability to be effective. So one Wraith already down, second Wraith, wiped out as well. Now the worker count actually even overall. And the second factory just being dropped. This is what I'm talking about with Mung. It's like no matter what happens, somehow in the early game he find he manages to create some sort of advantage. And it's gonna be double star I didn't even note this. Double star port. Cloak being researched, so really investing heavily in this overall. Marine sacrificing itself and Rush is gonna have to play this very, very carefully. SCV providing the forward scout. Compsat station being constructed. Those wraiths still should be able to maybe peek in and out with a decent amount of energy against the siege tank lines. Goliath's on that corner. At least a slight wedge near that third. We do have an SCV position there. Towards that right. Now cloaking their way in. Compsat. Expended. One wraith. Survives. Are they gonna they're gonna wait and maybe go for a second shot and that should evict Mung overall. But already we have Mung setting up to go for his third, and it's gonna feel a lot more comfortable grabbing that before Rush. So yeah, unseaging. Gonna go ahead and back out. So nice counterplay there from Rush. And I don't know that I've ever seen a double starport follow-up like that to kind of open up the field. That's Really clever play, and I'm kind of interested to see that down the line. Double machine shop now running to catch up in the overall siege tank count. Mung relegating himself to go ahead and hold that nine o'clock. He is getting that third, third the third base also going up for rush. Kind of interesting play overall, honestly. And Wraith also very mobile and can provide a little bit of harassment. Might be able to sneak that natural expansion, get a few additional shots. There is a turret right there. And that's a pretty wide covering turret, so only going to be able to take a shot at the engineering bay. Going to try to cycle back towards the main. Also going to be able to see the third. Might be able to wipe out the SCVs here, and this is actually going to be a pretty sizable advantage. And SCV is going to have, it's going to be all of the seconds to walk out up to this third and get it up and running again. And they also need a turret up here, otherwise those Wraith can sneak right back. So the mobility really playing in Rush's favor right this second has regained the worker lead overall. Double machine shop running four factories down overall versus the three factories. Triple machine shop though, to really flood those siege tanks behind this. So it looks like it is gonna be just siege tank out of the factories and then Wraith to provide air support overall. And I'm curious if Mung is actually gonna drop the vulture upgrades upon spotting that and maybe try to go for some cheap fill-in to kind of swarm once he has sufficient Goliaths and a decent amount of detection with that science vessel and that... Well, the science vessel, right? You're building the science vessel to get the science vessels to feel a little bit more comfortable overall. But right now, Rush, with the four worker lead, the supply lead, a good amount of map coverage. He's got map control, but not a lot of map vision with these Wraith. So might want to keep them active, but he's got to be very, very careful that he doesn't get caught with a Goliath. But this has put Mung in a 
very defensive stance. He is getting that third gas up and running, so not in the worst position, but at the same time is really cracked open. And so now I have to eat my words. Usually, like I said, Mung just finds ways to get ahead in the early stages of the game. Right now, Rush flipping that right. He took the table of Diggity's theory right there and tossed it against the wall. So not only did it violently flip, it violently flipped, hit the wall, and bounced right back is what's happening here. Mung trying to establish some catacorn territory going back to his bread and butter. You can just see trying to create the, the loose diagonal lines to cut off his opponent. Rush establishing a northern corridor. So he's going to try to isolate that nine o'clock so it's in his hands and then start expanding. It looks like he's already working on that six o'clock expansion. It looks like Mung going to grab the 12 o'clock himself. But and sending a single cloaked wraith, not to engage, but to just try to get a good look. Now making himself known to <laughs> provoke a comsat, but also to try to invite some turrets that direction. All the expenses that you, you would need, but I gotta say the three, this is scary, is the three, the three factory, the three machine shop factory lines, and wow. Okay, never mind. For a second there, I thought there was a command center floating out there, which I thought was very risky from Rush. But right now, solid worker lead. He's put, he's going for it, pushing up towards the natural expansion. Not a lot of siege tanks towards that edge. And the Siege Tank Wraith combination might be enough to break Mung's back right here. Pushing in a few of the Wraith getting picked off. Tank sieging short, but this is a huge pile down to eight and just four on that right hand side and then they're not pre-sieged. Looks like some counter Wraith being built and some Valkyrie, however, from Mung. He's just getting his third factory down. So maybe with some counter Wraith play, he can open things up, but right now, Rush has, I don't even know if he recognizes this, he's got a free walk to the natural. And currently holding overall. And that's allowing Mung to mount a defense. Two siege tanks now in the defensive slot. Plus one weapons just finishing for both. And there, the Valkyrie sneaking in with the cloaked wraith. And because Rush not capitalizing right there, now you've got four wraith picking away at the nine siege tanks and this is huge losses from rush does he have any goli and he has no goliaths or any sort of anti-air pushing up so these siege tanks are just forfeit mung with the next level play with a nice follow-up counter and that's going to open up him grabbing an additional base top right so seize air control continuing to push the wraith force up and that is a lot of lot so all of the extra production that came out of that early third machine shop has now been obliterated and it's reducing even further in spades that nine o'clock a single turret desperately trying to hold on to that nine o'clock finally a goliath up there but does he have any detection support it looks like not so and comps adding too late the valkyrie pushing up to try to be a superior threat to attract the goliath fire nice play right there so it looks like the majority of the all of the wraith going to be able to sneak out. A single vulture finding that top right has been expanded to. Six o'clock base is humming for us. He still has the overall worker advantage, but that was some catastrophic losses overall. Mung now engaging to the six. He is getting some free shots on the Wraith overall. So forcing that attack force back. Comsat denying that spoke. It looks like that command center has been interrupted top right in corner. And I'm not sure when Mung is gonna be able to push up and grab that base. Rush. That was an interesting cancellation. Lost a, a handful of resources right there. Is now grabbing the nine o'clock. See if the, I'm wondering if that vulture is gonna sneak back up. So it looks like two vultures making the way and maybe a lazy SCV pushing that direction. So as things stand, bases maybe slightly in Mung's favor if he can get an SCV up here to finish this. Rush is expanding into his opponent currently is holding that northern spoke, but this is also kind of setting him up to get cornered into the bottom left quadrant of the map. Mung is grabbing that three o'clock as well. I'm actually curious about this three o'clock take, if he can even hold this. Right now, Rush actually a little bit over saturated as far as his workers. Looks like another vulture able to sneak through. So I almost feel like Mung might be oversaturated on bases and Rush might be oversaturated on workers. Vulture gonna sneak back in. It should easily be, be taken out. Well, is he going to take out that SCV, though, before just barely before that command center finishes? So continued delays. And that means this base is going to end up completing beforehand. That now getting comp by Mung overall. 
I'm curious how long that's going to last because we could just see a few, even like a dropship or two would be sufficient. And look at that. Five machine shops. Siege tanks full now moving towards the front. SCVs being transferred. A lot of SCVs transferring top right as well as the final. The Wraith moving across position. It looks like they... So we got eight Wraith overall. A blockade force pinning back across that six o'clock spoke. And Mung just seizing the rest of the map. So the nine o'clock base in Russia's hands, but the three o'clock already in Mung's hands. And it looks like he's already camping out that bottom right. Rush pressing forward, four siege tanks greeting him right there. Some siege tanks on that edge. It looks like some mines firing off in Mung's favor. These tanks very, very bunched up currently. Nearly a full control group. It looks like there's eight on the north, one to the south. Otherwise, this might be enough to punch through if some vultures provide some support. I'm looking for the... It looks like the Wraith are trying to cycle that direction. Are certainly going to want to take out that forward barracks so they can try to... Dis or, sorry, the uh, both the barracks and the engineering bay to try to disguise the numbers. It looks like some vultures and some reinforcements are making their way up. But this, is, at the very least, is going to defend that nine o'clock for the long haul. Engineering bay dropping that barracks getting dropped as well. Air control still in Mung's favor, which I'm still waiting for maybe a dropship, since he does have air control to maybe turn that into a dropship play. We're getting a little bit too close, now sieging with the counter fire. More, a little bit of a miss micro there from Mung, and it's going to end up losing several siege tanks near the natural as a result. But oddly enough, between all of this, so Rush mining at the 9 o'clock, and Mung just grabbing every other base. Literally every other base. Supply lead in Russia's favor, but this... Really, Mung playing this kind of... I, I want to say risky? He's just presuming... He's got the upgrade lead, but he's just presuming that Rush was going to play more defensively. And not try to test these additional expansions and not push into his natural. And thus far, he's right. He's been playing so passively on that 9 o'clock. Uncharacteristic of Rush. But now moving up... Valkyrie versus Valkyrie out on the front. Now moving... Ooh, this could be a game-ending maneuver. Starting to push up towards that natural. A lot of siege tanks re-engaging, creating kind of that... The nice kind of backup to see it. That siege tank arc to invite those attack troops in. And get the better of it. Especially if they end up pushing in clumps. Some commsats dropping. Getting some first shots. Commsats both directions to kind of view things out, but while this is all happening, Mung is happily mining in that top right hand corner. No saturation at the natural or a little bit of saturation at the third overall. And so as far as like long term prospects, if this goes into a very long match, Mung will end up winning just because Rush hasn't grabbed additional bases outside of anything bottom left. But if Rush can press the advantage he's got right this second, and attack forces, maybe he can go ahead and box Mung in, cut him off from the rest of the map. And secure a win that direction, but he's got to recognize that the prerogative, he's, he's got to do that now. So it looks like he's trying to sweep across. He's saying, okay, you've got so many troops dedicated. But Mung pocketing some troops again with that Wraith attack force. They've been so valuable for Mung this entire time. Able to get additional siege tank kills and brush a lot of those troops back. And Mung... Now sweeping across, this is Mung style play. Like I said, just kind of smothering and he always finds the gaps. Saying, okay, you try to sweep across at the wrong location at the wrong time. So now you're gonna lose control of that six o'clock spoke, which is gonna leave that six o'clock base extremely exposed. See some vultures sneak in there sometime in the near future. And now Rush, despite having a big wedge at the nine o'clock position, needs to worry about his six o'clock position getting ransacked. So starting to fill in some siege tanks, the Wraith on that close corner, but all Mung has to do is apply a little bit of that pressure and mine everywhere else. And eventually he will end up starving out his opponent. Looks like I missed it. There's the drop at the nine o'clock. Instant lift off. I was expecting that somewhat earlier. So that's been shut down. So, and the tank's continuing to press in the vo oh. The Wraith going to be able to clear out those siege tanks that we're to the south, and this is just Mung just putting on a masterclass of TVT, I gotta say. If he ends up losing this, I'm gonna feel a bit embarrassed overall, but Mung's TVT is just really, really strong. Valkyries trying to catch those dropships. It looks like uh, they're gonna be able to clear an engineering bay, but the main's mined out. The natural expansion is just about mined out, so that's going to leave two bases left for Rush. One base potentially 
one vulture run by from being shut down. You've got, I think those dropships still active someplace, and Mung mining. Looks like he's just now establishing some mining right there. Mining all over the place. Across the rest of the map. Command center. Looks like command center. <laughs> what is he going to do? Wipe out the natural expansion and drop the command center? Uh, right there. So anyway. Massive dropship force. Counter dropping. Luckily for Rush. He had forces right there. But unlucky for Rush. Mung is following this up with a massive breach. Before tanks were sieged. So going to be able to clear out. So now that 6 o'clock location completely exposed, a brief counter drops in the form of tank bombs to clear things out. But now, Mung not making Rush's mistake and getting in siege tank range of that natural. So now it's going to be dropships out of the natural and nothing else. And following it up with siege tanks to plug that 6 o'clock and wipe it out. Are we going to see a counter push from that? No, it looks like he's going to try to load it up in the dropships to evict. He's got to get a move on though because the 6 o'clock, the turrets are gone very soon going to be under fire and he needs he's got to deal either with the six o'clock or open up the natural expansion let's see some scvs looking to distance mine at the three o'clock these scvs have got to be like if it's got to be the worst to be those scv it's like you know go out and mine that direction and then you get out there and it's like uh boss guess what we found gonna go ahead and try to engage in some attacks Right there. Yeah, battle SCVs now moving across the field from Rush. I think this is more of a signal of a white flag than anything. Siege tanks also moving up from the natural expansion and clearing out that third. So now Rush no longer mining. SCVs scattering, hoping to find resources that are magically out in the field that somehow where maybe they can return it to this command center. The command center is actually now floating for scouting information. But Mung completely has crushed everything. A, a supply depot. Now <laughs> this is turning into like old school dorky tactics where it's like i'm gonna hide a building on the map you're not gonna find it and you're gonna have to kill me sort of style of things the old school immature hunt every building i got down i wonder if this is gonna turn into a full like kill every building style of play it's a little immature of rush overall but siege tanks getting wiped out from this but so yeah i think that's it's been so, okay maybe it was to deny that command center i think maybe it was to deny the command center rather than the opposite but too little uh, yeah another supply depot getting blockaded there so he's doing what he can with what little he's got these scvs fighting for their own lives right here dropping some missile turrets bottom right to maybe not get wiped out from wraith and getting yeah distance dropped to try to distance mine as well a lot of siege tank packed into the main. Yeah, Rush is basically saying, okay, I do want you to, to take my attack. For, and all the Goliaths piled underneath the factories as well. Yeah, he wants to go to the last bitter man. So he's going to take a minute to, like, counter wish. <laughs> Look at this. A bunch of starports being dropped, though, for Mung. He's like, okay, with your 63 or whatever resources you're limping in. Look at this distance mining. He's unloading, mining, reloading them in the dropship and bringing them... He, he's using dropship... <laughs> distance mining tactics here to get to scoop up minerals this is a bit nuts so ferrying some SCVs out to get resources and then ferrying them back but a lot of store port, uh, star ports dropped I assume to build battle cruisers otherwise siege tank lines killing everything on the edge this is Mung's game here I gotta give uh, points for cleverness though here the, the distance mining SCVs in the dropships. These shanks making their way out, making sure. So yeah, okay, we got some turrets down here, but the turrets unfortunately do not attack siege tanks. I wonder if that's like wh why that is. Is it just kind of like a... Is it just kind of like a, a thing of like courtesy? It's like, no, I refuse. This is my siege tank. My siege tank that attacks air. Thank you very much. Looks like some of the SCVs we're on auto return. Now the siege tanks found it and they're scattering. Gotta play hide and go seek. Get back in the dropship. Scurry back out. Same thing. Yeah, that must be the detente. The turrets must agree not to attack the siege tanks and the siege tanks agree not to attack air. It's like, okay, you got your side of the field. I got mine. And that's how it's going to be. We're not going to bother angling shots. We're not going to point. We will not point these turrets up. You don't point your turrets down. That is the agreement. I think these dropships, they're all empty. They might scoop up a lot of this and go for a doom drop on the main, but I wouldn't be shocked actually if they just move in and die to free up some supply. 
Supply Depot gone, top right. We do have the wall of turrets <laughs> over on the corner here. Dropships re-planting themselves. Overall, yeah, this is just... I'm, I think what I'm going to do is we'll bring the timer back. Where's the timer? Off the top of my head, I can't remember what the... Uh, we'll speed things up. Is So replay, there it is. We're going to increase it a little bit. Because it's clear Among has won this game. Look at the glorious Doom Drop here. here. Is this going to be the final moments? So clearing all this out, but yeah, Rush being a little bit immature. <laughs> or at least riling Mung and wasting his time at this stage. I hope they're having a laugh. Both directions. So factories getting wiped out. All of this getting wiped out. Yeah, this okay, I think it was the, the run, so it's just going to be the turrets hiding bottom right for Rush. Even the pros do it, ladies and gentlemen. Even the pros on ladder pull the uh, let's hide a building game. Oh, Rush. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Just wanting to waste the time overall. Okay, we'll, we'll speed it up. Okay, now they've been spotted bottom right. Sea Shank, Wraith, everything else moving in. Clearing it out. A single floating factory that's burning, trying to hide, and we've got something, an engineering bay behind the minimap. Okay, engineering bay. <laughs> He's <laughs> still at the main. That will be it. Elimination. I, I can't remember the last time I casted a game where it was elimination by buildings. But regardless, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.